Okay, so this is the disadvantage of riding your bike in the winter, okay? Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel, and thank you so much for joining me again. I'm here in my garage. Uh, it is a Sunday. It's about a week and a half uh, left of Christmas now, and the weather has been horrible. It's been totally, totally horrible. Um, so I haven't really had the, the bike out at all, um, only at weekends when the weather is, is good enough to get the bikes out and ride them. What I am trying to do is just keep the bikes warm, keep the batteries sort of charged up, and keep the oil flowing and stuff in the engines and stuff uh, because obviously I want to try and keep them going through the winter without things like the batteries going flat and stuff like that uh, but the weather has been really crap now I have actually stopped commuting to work and the reasons for that is really um, because it's dark when I go to work and it's dark when I come home from work there's been quite a few accidents recently uh, a couple involving motorcyclists and one on Friday actually involving a cyclist where he was actually put through the windscreen of a car. I think, I believe what the news report said is that it was actually a head-on collision and he's gone through the windscreen and the road was shut for about five hours. So I don't know what the outcome of that is, but it sounded horrendous. And, you know, it's just, in my opinion, it's just too dangerous to be on the road. And I really just don't want to take any risks. I've had a couple of scenarios where uh, a van's pulled out in front of me, but luckily I could see it almost about to happen. So I adjusted my speed, I was hovering the brakes, and I prepared myself for it. And, you know, I, I saw it happen plenty of time. So I had loads of time to react. Now, obviously, if I was going faster or I wasn't really quite paying attention, then that could have turned out a lot different. That's uh, why I haven't been commuting. So there's a few reasons, but I decided that the car is obviously the best option. So what I'm doing this morning, is I've got a 10 mile loop that I used to do in my cars. Uh, that when I had the McLaren and the Porsche actually, I used to take them out through the winter, I used to take them out on this little 10 mile loop. And I think that was a, just enough time to get the car up to temperature I then let it tick over for a few minutes. And that was just enough to do it sort of like on a weekly basis. And it just kept the battery in good condition. I suppose it kept the engine in good condition with all the oils going circulation through the, through the engine. Um, and that's what I'm gonna be doing with the motorbikes where possible. If the weather is horrendous like it has been over the last few weeks, then what I tend to do is then just come into the garage, open up the doors and turn the, uh, turn the bikes on and just let them tick over for about 10 minutes. And that's just enough to get it up to about sort of half to two thirds temperature. And I mean, that's what I'm doing. I don't know what the right or wrong is. Obviously I know people do have trickle chargers and actually I do have a trickle charger for the Ducati, but I haven't had to use it yet because every sort of like weekend I come to the bikes and turn them on, they actually start absolutely fine. Um, so I think that's just enough to keep the bikes sort of going through the winter and that's what I want to do and obviously like today it is actually dry roads out there so uh, I'm going to be getting the bikes out and just going for that this little 10 mile loop that I've got and uh, I don't want to enjoy the bikes as well I don't want to stop riding until sort of March April time obviously I want to be on the bikes as much as possible because that's what I enjoy so this morning I'm going to take the Aprilia out now I'm going to get that out and then do my little 10 mile loop come back and then I'll take the Ducati out it's about an hour in total obviously coming home changing bikes over and getting back out again it takes about an hour so but it's good fun and I sort of like you almost forget how much you enjoy the bikes when you do actually get out and uh, get riding them I don't actually have my GoPros with me so unfortunately I'm not going to be uh, taking you along for the journey so I'm going to get kitted up and I'm going to get out on the bikes so I'll catch you in a bit. I guess you're back. Are you gonna tell me where you went? All the messages I sent with no reply. It's like that. You're just gonna walk into my room. I hate how you assume. I'll take the pleasure and the pain. The sorrows in your brain. So it's not actually too bad out there. It's not actually too cold. Um, it's all right. My hands are a little bit tingly, but it's actually not too bad. Uh, the roads are a little bit sketchy. Uh, there are a few damp patches and stuff, but I am going to take the, uh, the Ducati out now and just do basically the same sort of loop. Um, but I've just forgotten how much I love these bikes. It's so much fun to ride and kind of, if you haven't done it for a few weeks, you sort of kind of miss it. Uh, so yeah, we're going to get onto the Ducati now and do exactly the same thing. A 
okay so this is the disadvantage of riding your bike in the winter okay so this is what's going to happen to your bike if you ride it in the winter i tried to avoid as many puddles as i could but it is filthy man but it's a motorbike it's there to be ridden it's got full ppf on it who cares i've just had the most amazing ride it's been great it's been really really good fun okay so that ride's over now and it really was worth it i know the bike's absolutely filthy now but it's just one of them small prices to pay that bike when you step over on the ducati it's just such an incredible bike to ride um, there's just something about them and if you haven't had a chance to go and ride one i really suggest you uh, to ride one i really recommend them because they're just incredible just the vibration the smell the the noise the feel of them the position just i don't know there's just something about them that i really really like so i strongly recommend you go out and uh, try one at least you know because i think you'll be pleasantly surprised but but that's kind of it now for this year it's only a week and a half till christmas so i don't think there's going to be any more videos uh probably not even going to be another video this year um in a couple of weeks so but for 2020 i've got quite a bit planned we've got some road trips i'm going to do a bit more content with my riding buddies as well there's a small group of us of about 12 um, but there's some really nice bikes in that group so it'd be worth sort of like uh, showing you guys uh, them and sort of bringing you along for the cafe stops that we go out on um, and yeah it's, it's, it's a good laugh so I'll strap up the GoPros to my bike you know but obviously that's going to be in a few months time but also for 2020 I want to do a couple of road trips abroad uh, whether I do them on these bikes or hire a bike or buy a bike I have no idea um, I do want to bring a car to my garage um, if I tick that R8 box I'm not too sure yet I really don't know which way it's going to go um, but also another motorbike as well. Now I'm not going to replace these. I think I'm going to keep these bikes. But I really, really want to go um, and have a ride on a, a V4S. And in the shop there was a coarse version of that bike. And it is absolutely amazing. It just looks stunning. Um, I've already had an insurance quote on that bike. And it's not actually too bad. It's well within my reach. So, um, But the only problem with that is obviously it's over 200 brake horsepower. And I've only been riding six months. So, well, obviously if I look at it next year, it will probably been about a year. But I don't know if I'm going to go down the V4S course yet. Or just get another year under my belt. So we'll see. Um, we'll see what I decide. Um, but yeah, that's it probably for this year. Um, so we've obviously got Christmas. And then once the new year's over and the weather starts to improve... I definitely intend to get the content on the channel a bit more um, regular. So yeah, until then guys, um, I hope you have a lovely Christmas and a happy new year and I'll see you in 2020. Thanks ever so much for watching my videos and we'll see you again. Cheers.